President Tinubu of Nigeria, assigning portfolios to his ministers over one week after they were screened by the Senate. Now, while some Nigerians have heaved a sigh of relief, stakeholders and financial analysts uh, do seem to be apprehensive about the likely impact of the appointments on the financial markets. We now uh, turn to the group CEO of Cowrie Asset Management, Mr. Johnson Chuku, who's in New York City, joining us uh, to discuss the appointments and the economic issues arising uh, that Nigerians would have to contend with going forward. Uh, good evening, sir. I think it's still afternoon in New York. It's good to have you, Mr. Chuku. Um, so, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, what are your thoughts, you know, as a market professional regarding the newly announced uh, cabinets? Thank you, Lotus, for having me. Um, good evening. Um, I, I think the market has been neutral uh, as, it is, as, as uh, with respect to the appointments. Uh, if you look at the market so far, we, we didn't see any market uh, strong movement after the appointment, either in the positive direction or the negative direction. And uh, with, after assigning the portfolio, the, the current week, I mean, we've seen the market four days of market uh, uh, losses, and only today that the market gained. Uh, so far this week, the market has lost about... Uh, 60 basis points, I mean 93 basis points, um, and yet month to date, uh, the market has lost about 60 uh, basis points. Uh, so if you look at it, I mean, sorry, the market has gained only about 60 basis points. If you look at it, this month, uh, the month of August has been the weakest in the recent months. So I think uh, the market has taken uh, the appointments and assignment of portfolios with some level of neutrality. Uh, the market is contained with other factors, other macroeconomic factors that are, uh, seem to uh, have taken precedence over the assignment of portfolios to the, um, to the cabinet members. Uh, speaking of the cabinet members, how should the new team of ministers work towards an economy that can leverage the investments, uh, I guess, in the securities market? Well, the starting point is that um, they need to form a strong economic management team. Uh, there are a number of names there that are, are uh, known to have strong economic background. Um, so they need to set up an economic management team. Because the challenge we have today is beyond an individual uh, capacity to deal with or, or what an individual can solely in his individual wisdom handle. I think there's a need for collective wisdom. The issue of raising funds, I mean, uh, the government has already mounted that they are, they are hoping or they are planning to sell down some of the assets, uh, federal government assets, to risk uh, funding, and that uh, they will come to the capital market to raise some, uh, sell some of those uh, items. Before the advent of the current government, the previous immediate past government was already toying with the idea of uh, listing of Nigerian stock, um, listing of uh, Nigerian National uh, NNPC Limited on the exchange, on NGX. Uh, I think there's already work in progress towards that. Uh, they already, and I'm aware they're already preparing uh, the company for listing. So clearly, um, that is a route to go. And they also have mentioned the issue of selling down of some of our JV assets. I also think to sell those assets, they also need to come to the capital market so that it's done in a more transparent manner. So the capital market is there waiting and available to be used uh, to raise long-term funds uh, for the public interest. I, you know, speaking of the public interest, as far as the financial markets are concerned, do you think that the composition of the new cabinet can be a catalyst for the financial markets? I mean, if you're a minister in mines and steel, for example, can you maybe get an IPO out of that? Or if you're in tourism or any of the other sectors, how do you think they can, can, they can impact the financial markets? Well, it depends on the focus, their focus. Um, clearly, uh, like I've always said, that the Nigerian economy is one economy that you don't have any matured sector. Uh, you just mentioned the issue of solid minerals. One of the challenges uh, that we have, that we have to deal with as a country is that uh, we have an economy that is largely informal. No company today in the solid mineral sector is quoted um, unless you include the oil and gas sector operators, which are separated in terms of uh, the structure of our accounting for of solid minerals. So there's no company in the uh, solid mineral. Most people operating in that lay are operating at artisanal level. Um, if you look at agriculture, maybe only two or three companies are quoted from the agricultural sector. Well, as agriculture accounts for almost a quarter of the Nigerian GDP. Uh, look at trade. Trade accounts for almost 15% of the Nigerian GDP. Uh, you currently don't have a quoted company that is in the trade sector. The oil and gas sector, which actually generates about 90 million of foreign exchange, and the only surplus is quoted in the upstream sector. So you still have a lot of inform informal. The country's economy is largely informal. So if any of the ministers is bent on formalizing his or her sector, uh, then there will be opportunity to bring 
companies from that sector to be listed, to be quoted on the exchange. Uh, but the starting point is that you have to look at how do we formalize uh, the several sectors that are basically operating at, 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 a, at a snare level. And that, for me, will be the heavy lifting uh, for those that want to put structures in the economy and enhance the viability of the economy. Hey, Mr. Johnson, you see, this is why we have you on the show. Thank you so much for that excellent breakdown there. That really, really explains the issues with what they have to do with their portfolios to, to attract companies. Um, now, it's still on that. I, I know I also ask you about market depth. As far as how quickly the new administration should leverage the capital market for asset sales and other funding needs, is the depth there in the markets to, to get any of that done? Yes, I, was, I think the debt is there. In the first place, if you look at um, the source of funding in the market today, and you look at who are the major participants in the market, we have the fund managers. Today, the PFS has more than 16 trillion in assets under management. Uh, most of those investments are in federal government debt instruments. Uh, in effect, they can cycle them out of debt instruments and cycle them into uh, equity instruments. Uh, that are listed, are viable equity instruments are listed in the, on the exchange. Um, then you also have private capital that are willing uh, to go into viable investment instruments. But beyond the local uh, funding capacity, you also have foreign investors. The key thing about um, uh, listing our companies or coming to the market to raise money, you come, it, it, it instills a lot of transparency on the part of the issuer. And that will make such instruments attractive, not just to local investors, to foreign investors. If we get our art right, uh, if we can address the issue of um, 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 held back investment by foreign portfolio investors who are trying to exit, if they can access funding to exit and we create liquidity in the forest market, the country remains a viable investment uh, destination for foreign direct investors and foreign portfolio investors. And some of them will be buying uh, into uh, these companies as a, a brownfield, uh, they, they are, they've been looking to come into the company, into the country, and then they see this opportunity to come into some sectors where they have interest in. And they could take strategic in, uh, holding in some of these companies that will be listed. So the market depth is beyond the local currency liquidity we have here. It also includes global investment community that we see opportunities once we get our financial market uh, stabilized. Very much, very much agree with you on that point. Um, the uh, 2Q Capital Market Committee, or CMC, uh, due next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. What's your outlook on the key issues that should be on the agenda? Maybe you can also describe what the CNC does as well. Well, the uh, Capital Market Committee is basically a committee of capital market operators that focus on improving the viability of the market, improving the market transparency, improving the depth of the market, and improving the data and breadth of the market, uh, attracting a um, listing on the exchange, ensuring that the rules are adhered to, and uh, enforcing transparency or coming up with policies that will uh, further deepen and enhance the market. So in terms of what the focus will be, the focus will continue to be how do we deepen the market, how do we uh, attract um, listing on the exchange, and uh, how do we make sure that we maintain the highest level of transparency and market integrity? Those have been the hallmark and the underlying, underpinning motive objective of the CMC. Um, of course, there are several subcommittees that are working on some segments of uh, uh, the capital market development. Our uh, emphasis have been on capital market development in recent past. Now, uh, Mr. Johnson, do, do we have to, can you separate, is it, is it possible with everything I've looked at that we, that we need for the capital market, is there any way to separate that from general economic growth? I mean, with all the conversation we've had this evening now, would it all be made easier if Nigeria's, if GDP takes off and we just see general economic growth? It, because does general economic growth take the capital market along with it? Well, you know, if you observe what I have said, I kept make, making reference to that if we stabilize our macroeconomic environment. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the capital market is an integral part of the, uh, the nation's economy. It cannot be divorced from what's happening in the general economy. Uh, we need to have uh, price stability. We've not had the price stability in the past couple of months um, for the market to be vibrant. Uh, of course, policies in the, in, in the uh, macroeconomic environment have direct impact on the market in terms of viability of tradable instruments, in terms of attractiveness of tradable instruments, in terms of risk uh, profile of 
uh, instruments in the market in terms of attractiveness as, as a destination for capital raising. So you can divorce the two. Uh, and that's why you have to focus on how do we address the larger macroeconomic issues, uh, issues about around exchange rates, uh, issues around uh, liqui uh, forex liquidity, uh, issues around um, uh, the investment climate. These are critical for you to have a vibrant capital market. Mr. John when I, when I talk to people about investing in the capital markets, particularly the NGX, people, so those who are old enough to remember the crash of 2008, express some fear and some trepidation. What would you say to them? Is to get past that and still look forward to making gains on the markets? Well, what would your message be to such people who are nervous? My message to them is always that uh, they have to avoid repeating the mistakes of the past. Um, and that mistake of the past was that there was a shift syndrome. Uh, immediately the market began to rally. Everybody came into the market. People were buying anything, anything that was quoted, uh, including an instrument that had no fundamentals. Uh, today, we have seen in the recent past, we've seen instruments with weak fundamentals that have seen significant market gains. And my advice has always been, go to an investment expert to guide you. Unless you have those competencies, uh, is a technical market, is a, a sophisticated a technical market, you really can't play it on your own if you don't have the technical skills. Go through an investment advisor, and if you cannot go through a mutual fund, a collective investment instrument, so you don't have to pay an advisor in case your investment in, uh, capital is not huge. But clearly, it's not a market uh, for every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It's not a market where you just go and gamble. Because people, and you also have to realize that this is a long-term market. It's not a short-term market. It's not a money market. That's why we call it capital market. So you go in there, you don't, uh, people just say they will nose in and nose out. They will go in today and buy and make capital gain of 100% and go out the next day. It doesn't work that way. So primary advice, walk through an investment house. All right, like a like a carry asset management. Who better than 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 you? Um, okay, what about you saw inflation numbers recently that um, we continue to climb. Headline at what twenty four now? Is it twenty four point oh eight or so? Is is that is that a deterrent against with respect to capital gains and dividend yields, or can can one still beat inflation with capital gains and dividend yield for the stocks that we have? Well, there are many stocks in the market that has beaten inflation in the current year. Um, so you can still beat inflation um, with capital gains, uh, given what we've seen in the capital market in the past couple of weeks. But um, of course, inflation has a, a dampening effect on uh, uh, investment instruments. Uh, it, it turned, um, clearly, everybody who is investing in local currency asset want to. Uh, generate returns or any returns above the infl inflation rate. Inflation at 24.08% uh, indicates that you need a minimum return of 24.08% to keep the value of your asset at the same level. So you need to outperform that. But there are some instruments that have done that in, in, in the past couple of weeks. It might be difficult to have a dividend yield uh, that will outperform uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, current inflation rate. But with capital gains, you can possibly do that. And today, the equity market seems to want be the only market segment that has that even if you call it weak potential to outperform the inflation rate. Okay, maybe in addition to that, some segments of, of, of the real estate market. But beyond that, the fixed income market, uh, there's no instrument in the Nigerian fixed income space that is generating returns that's comparable to the current inflation rate. Mr. Johnson Chuku, Group CEO, Carry Asset Management, you're a, you're a body of wisdom, sir. It's always a pleasure talking to you about the capital markets. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time.